Hey everybody. Today, Rado runs through discoveries, the journals of Lewis and Clark. From designer Cedric Chabussy, I think I got that right. Sorry, Cedric, if I butchered your name there. But Cedric, he must love Lewis and Clark because this is the second game he's put out that really kind of delves into that famous historical expedition. And unlike his previous game, Lewis and Clark, which if you've seen my run through for was a fantastic, phenomenal card based racing game, you know, where players are running competing expeditions, trying to make it to the West Coast first. In this game, we are all members of the same expedition. In fact, in this game, Jen's going to be Meriwether Lewis and I'm going to be John Ordway, who was another one of the leaders of the original expedition. And you can be up to four players. One person can be Clark. I mean, no. and we are all ostensibly working together, exploring, trying to you know be befriend the, the the native populace, trying to discover flora and fauna, trying to blaze trails and you know map out you know the interior of the continent. But we have a friendly rivalry going on, and there is a competition. Whoever has made the most discoveries, or more to the point, whoever has you know written about the discoveries, the most discoveries in their journal, wins the game. And so, like I said, I'm John Ordway, which means at the beginning of the game, each one of these dice represents one of the 30 members of the original Lewis and Clark expedition. And five of the expedition members are really kind of loyal to me. They love John Ordway. And Jen, she's got five of them who are really loyal to Lewis. Now, don't get me wrong, these guys will work for me, and my guys will work for Jen. It's just that they prefer working for me if they can. And also, in a two player game, there are six gray ones, the neutral guys, who are equally happy you know, doing tasks for either me or Jen. Now, as part of setup, some of the dice won't be in there. I'm playing a two player game, so there's four dice that won't be in. And also, in a two player game, 15 of the 55 cards in this deck are randomly removed from the game. And you can see I've left them out here because it is kind of nice to know that, hey, well, three flora cards have been taken out and three fauna cards have been taken out. Because over here on my little player board, I have a reminder of, well, in the 55 deck of cards, there are seven total flora cards. And I can see, well, there's three of them over there that have been removed from the game. Because what we're trying to do to score points is making discoveries. We can make discoveries of flora and fauna, and this is a set collection game. If, at the end of the game, I've got a set of fish and mammals and you know flora and birds, a, a set of all four, that's worth 24 points. A set of three of these four is worth 15 points. A single one by itself is worth three points. So you're definitely trying to do set collection, which makes certain cards like, well, hey, this brown bear card, if I can explore and discover the brown bear and write about it in my journals, that could potentially be worth more points to me at the end of the game if, as I'm set building. Now, you can also make points by you know, basically discovering and befriending the Native American tribes. The, yeah, and whoever has done the most of that at the end of the game will score 12 points. Second place is six points. Third place is zero. And so there's discoveries and trails to be placed. There's the indigenous people to befriend and negotiate and get help from. And we're going to be doing all that right now. Now, before the game starts, though, everybody gets one discovery card they can take. Let's see, and who, I forget, is it me who goes first? I'm the first player, but I think it's the last player who gets the first. So Jen gets first dibs on, on taking one of these areas that she wants to explore. And I think, does she want to go for the brown bear? You know, starting to work on set collection can be potentially worth a lot of points, upwards of 24 points if she gets a full set. So with that, I think she will go on ahead and grab this one. Although, this one's a bit tougher to do because to explore this, she has to either... Well, actually, it's not that bad. She has to explore three rivers and then a mountain, or alternatively, she can t by taking this path, or alternatively, she can take this path and just explore two mountains. So Jen's going to go ahead and grab that. And a new one comes out. And now I have to grab one. Hmm. So there aren't any, right, so this one's worth seven points, but this is the toughest of them, which is why it's worth seven points, because I've got to get through two mountains and then three rivers. And that's a bit of an ask this early in the game. But the other ones there are basically kind of the same thing. This one is a mountain and then two rivers or three rivers, or alternatively, three rivers or a river and a mountain. So, eh, I'll go on ahead. Interesting. You know, I think I'll take this one. All right. And so then another one comes out. And you can see, by the way, these are rounded edges, except for this is a square cut edge because it's designed to slip right into this little slot right here. All right. So, the game is now fully set up and we are ready to start making 
our discoveries. I'll be the first player, and so what I do is I go on ahead and roll my dice. And actually, everybody rolls their dice right up front. So, let's see, so I've got a journal, I've got some walking, I've got two negotiation and two walking. Jen rolls hers at the same time. She's got some horseback riding, two negotiation, and two journal dice. Okay, and so now, uh, let's get going. It's my turn, I'm the first player. On your turn, you are either going to spend some of your dice to do one of the various actions that are available to you. These are all spots where I can place my dice or I am going to recover dice. Because over time, as I start using up my dice, they will be spent. And they end up coming up here to the main board where they are resting. And um, on a turn, I'm either going to spend dice or I'm going to spend my entire turn recovering dice that are currently resting. Now, of course, I've got all my dice at the beginning. There aren't any dice to recover. These uh, dice haven't been put to work yet, but they'll come into the pool very soon. So there's no dice for me to cover. So I'm going to go on ahead and spend some of these dice. So. I could spend... Now, and when you choose to spend dice, you can see I, I ended up with three different dice faces. These dice, by the way, have one journal... Or, I'm sorry, two journals, one negotiation, one horseback riding, and two hiking. And so, on a turn, you have to declare, if you're going to play dice, what symbol are you going to play? And whatever symbol that is, you can play as many of those dice as you have. So, if I were to declare hiking, I could play one or both of these dice. If I were to declare negotiation with the American Indians, I could use one of these two dice. Or if I was to declare journal, I could use this die. I could only use one die. So, you know what? I think I do want to negotiate with the you know with the American Indian. So I'm gonna go on ahead and declare I'm negotiating this turn. So I'm gonna play both of these dice. Now if I look over here, there these are all the spaces where I can put. Now um the negotiate dice, a single die could come here, and that would allow me to negotiate with a friendly tribe, which is represented by the symbol. And if I look up here, the the uh I'm not sure how to pronounce it, uh the Minotauri, or you know Minotauri, they are a friendly tribe. So I could negotiate with them with only a single die. Or alternatively, wary tribes like uh, uh, the, the, oh, the, the Wanapum or the Walla Walla. Ooh, Walla Walla. Walla Walla, Washington. Jen lived not too far from there growing up. All right, so if I want, I can negotiate with them. But since they are wary tribes, I would have to use two dice. You can see it requires two dice to negotiate with a wary tribe. And so, once I've negotiated with one of these tribes, I will basically take this card and it will give me a new special ability that I have for the rest of the game. And looking at it, I, of all these abilities, I think I'm going to use both of these. As you can see, I have to use two to negotiate with Wary. So I'm going to place both of these here, which will give me access to the Walla Walla or the, uh, the Wanapum. And... Oh, See, now the Walla Walla, they give me the ability, they help me blaze trails and explore. If, in a future turn, I have three dice that I could spend, horseback riding and hiking and journal, with all of these, I can travel in a single action, although you know, it took me several actions to get ready for it, to prepare for the expedition, but this lets me go through three mountains plus two rivers. That's really good, because if you look on my board, I can use two hiking plus a journal to do three rivers. I could do three of any die plus a journal to do two mountains. So you can see it's fairly expensive. If I want to do two mountains and three rivers, it would cost me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dice to do that. But over here, I only need three dice to get three mountains and two rivers. So this is a much more, the Walla Walla are much better suited to help me explore. So do I want that? Or alternatively, because I'm, if I could go for this one, the, uh, the Wanapum, they, uh, they enhance my ability to change the value of my dice. One of the actions I can do is, is change my dice, because if I, haven't, if I don't have what I roll, I can change one or two dice to anything I want. If I have the Wanapum on my side, they actually let me do three dice. I can change three dice to whatever I want, which is also very useful. And it helps mitigate the luck of the roll. But you know what? I think I can't pass up on this. The, the Walla Walla, they have joined me. And so... 
Uh, and, and, and that's it. My whole turn is over. If I had more negotiate dice, I could go on ahead. I could place one over here and negotiate with a friendly tribe. I could place one over here to change my remaining dice to a different face if I want. But as it is, I chose negotiate. I only had two negotiation dice, so my turn is over. And then at the end of my turn, these dice, they're, you know, these were two members of my expedition who went and negotiated, and now they're going to take a break. You can see, because they have the negotiation face, they come on this side of the board. Negotiation and journal dice that are spent go over here. Hiking and horse riding come over here. And now, at the end of my turn, I draw a new card from the deck. And so now this is, never, this is going to be a place we can never explore, because instead, it's going to be the, uh, the, the, the Klatskani tribe who are a wary tribe who we can negotiate with to get access to another ability. All right. And that was it. That was my whole turn. I chose a particular type. I spent those dice. I got a benefit, which is going to help me in the future. And now it is Jen's turn. So now Jen, you know, she also happened to get a couple negotiations. So maybe she wants to go on ahead and jump right into that as well. Let's see. So she could. Let's see, I think Jen will do something a little bit different. Jen will. She, she will use, she'll say uh, she's doing negotiation as well. So that means she's not using these journal dice. She's not using... Mm, well, she could use the horse die. Let's see here. Now, Jen knows when she explores, she's going to have to either have a total explore of three... To, to explore this area and discover the brown bear, she needs three rivers plus a mountain or alternatively two mountains. Now, to be able to explore two mountains, she needs to have three matching dice to be able to play here, plus a journal die. And once she's played all four of these dice here, she will be able to explore two mountains, which would let her finish exploring this. Now, Jen... So Jen needs basically three of a kind. So I think what Jen's going to do is, Jen is going to declare negotiation. And first of all, she's going to use a single die. Oh, wait, oh, I forgot. Oh, I already forgot one thing. When I negotiated, you know, with, with this wary tribe, in addition to taking the card, I also got to grab one neutral guy who joined my, me. And so now I've got four dice to roll next turn. Because I forget, whenever you negotiate with the tribes, you also get another one of the workers gets added to the game pool. All right. So now Jen, she's going to do a negotiation but with the friendly tribe, which, and there's only one friendly tribe out, the, 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 the Minotauri. And this is a special power. Which means Jen now gets to take any one of these discovery tiles and claim it for herself. Uh, which means we're not competing for it anymore because this is a race. The first player to grab any of these, you know, basically holds on to it. And so it's kind of a shame. Jen would love to do this when there's like, you know, she'd love to be able to grab the Lewis Woodpecker over here and start continuing to monopolize trying to get, you know, certain flora or fauna discovered, but instead, this one's not available, so one of these are available. I guess, what the heck, she will go on ahead and grab this six-pointer. And so now, it sits over here. And in the future, whenever Jen does an explore action, normally, a player only gets to choose the, the one they've got assigned to them, but Jen has two she can choose from. And she's basically grabbed this six-pointer for herself. I'll never be able to do it. All right, but Jen's not done yet. Well, of course, she did this, so another gray die gets added. And so Jen, now, this die cannot be used this turn. It'll be added to her pool next, you know, at the end of the turn. So remember, Jen declared negotiation. She's used one of her negotiation dice. She's got another one. She's going to use this other one to come over here and change the value of dice. She can change either one or two dice to any face she wants. And I think what she's going to do is she's going to turn this horse die over here to another journal. And now Jen has three journals. And that's what she needs. She needs to have three matching dice to be able to trigger exploring the mountains. So Jen has set herself up for the next turn. And now at the end of her turn, she gets this new die added. A, the, this woodpecker comes out. And boy, we would both like that. I mean, this isn't worth any points, but it's one of only, what? A, there's only five bird cards in the game. And I mean, some of them might be the other sides of these dice. I mean, I don't really know what's on the other side. So if you can grab these to get the big, big set collection points, so Jen would have grabbed that as her special power, but it wasn't out yet. But anyway, so at the end of Jen's turn, we put another one out, and we also put another tribe out. And so there are three wary tribes out. Now the, the, the Bannock have come out as well. And this is another one that helps with exploration. Okay, so 
And at the end of Jen's turn, you'll notice the dice, the actual, the spaces she chose has that little arrow. That means at the end of the turn, any dice you put on these spaces, they are exhausted and they go up to the board. And so now, because these were negotiation dice, they come over here as well. And that was Jen's whole turn. All right. Now, the other interesting thing, too, is you'll notice the Walla Walla, who I've befriended, they have one TP on them, while Jen's, you know, Native American friends have two TPs. That means Jen is currently in the lead for the 12 point bonus at the end of the game because whoever has you know befriended the most tribes, who you know has the most TP icons, scores 12 points. So that's a big big. So Jen's in the lead on you know befriending the natives as well. Okay, so back to me, back to my turn. Now I don't re-roll. Once you you know when you roll, you only roll these dice when you first get them, and then you just have to make use of them as best you can. So I've got four dice, and three of them are hiking. So if I activate hiking action this turn, I can go on ahead and grab all of these. And I could maybe, I could do a triple action and prepare to um, climb mountains. Although what I really want to do is I want to prepare for this action here because if I can prepare for this action and launch this, that's three rivers explored. And as you can see, I need to explore three rivers. So I think this turn I'm going to declare hiking. And that means I can use one, two, or three of these dice. And I'm going to use all of them, I think. So I'm going to use two of them because you can see I need two hiking dice to come down here. Although you'll notice one of the dice uh, has a little arrow, so that means it goes up to the board and the other one stays. So I'm going to use these. One of them comes back up to the board and it goes over to this side of the board because this is a hiking, but the other one stays. And this represents the fact that I have now prepared. I've, 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 I've done all the preparation I need to be able to explore through three river spaces. And this will stay here until some point in the future when I actually put a journal die here, which means I will actually do the exploration. But I'm not done with my turn yet because remember, I declared hiking. so. Oh, actually, you know what? Actually, hold on a second. Uh, to do this, I'm going to activate this with this yellow and this gray. The yellow will come back to the board, and I'll keep the gray here. All right. But remember, I declared hiking, so I've still got this die. I can use this for something as well. And, uh, you know, so I could use this to change the value of dice. I could put it down here so I could start preparing to travel with the Walla Walla because you can see I need a foot there. I can't put it here because I would need three matching dice to activate this space, so I can't do that. I could put it over here so that I could swap my current you know, queued up Explorer with one of the other ones that's out there. Although, I can swap this for that, but they're both the same. I am kind of tempted though to swap to grab this Woodpecker before it goes. So that's actually pretty tempting. But you know what? If I look around, I can see that Jen is not... I mean, I'm going to be able to explore. I'm going to get this explored before Jen gets that explored. I'm ahead of her, so I'm pretty confident I'll be able to pick this up anyway. So you know what? Actually, even though I could use this to change dice or swap cards, I'm just going to save it. I don't have to use all of my hiking dice. So I declared hiking, but I only used two of the dice. And now my turn is over, and I am prepared to actually launch this expedition here. All right. And now it's Jen's turn. Jen, she's going to declare she's using her journal dice. And so that's one, two, three, um, you know, because she has three. And all three of them are going to go on this space. And you can see two of them will, one of them will stay on the space and the other two will come up to the board. And you can see over here, now, all, you know, pretty much all of Jen's colored dice are tied up, resting, ready to go again. But Jen has prepared to, do, to explore two mountains, which is what she needs to discover this brown bear. And that was her turn. And now Jen's down to only two dice left. I've got three. And now it is my turn. And folks, you've been very patient. Although, so what I was going to do this turn is I was going to go on ahead and explore. Because you can see, this is prepped up. This, this expedition is ready to launch. All I need to do is put a journal die here so that I can record my findings. Whenever you, once you've prepared, and you can prepare and have multiple things queued up, ready to explore, but you won't be able to launch them until you place an A. So anyway, I could do that. But I have another option. I could wait, and instead, I could have this turn be, instead of playing dice, I could collect dice. Because look, there's six dice over here, two of mine and four of Jen's. And so I'm actually fairly tempted to go on ahead and collect these dice. And I would get all of the dice, mine and Jen's. So that would give me a lot of fun. I'd roll all of them when they come back ready to work, and that could give me a lot more flexibility on my next turn. Um, but here's the risky part. If I 
basically recruit Jen's value. Remember, these are the guys who are kind of loyal to Meriwether, or loyal to Jen. If I take them, they'll work for me because we're all on the same team. But if Jen ever decides to recall dice, she could take, she could recall these guys because they're loyal to her, and she could pull them right out from underneath me. So that's a really key crux of the game is you can use other players' workers on your turn, but it's risky to recruit them because they're not loyal to you and they might disappear at any time. So I could go on ahead and it'd be nice to grab all these dice, but I don't think I'm going to. Instead, I am just going to go on ahead. I'm going to use journals this turn. I only have one die I can play, and I'm going to put it here. And what that means is I have now launched an expedition, and with three rivers, as you can see, I, you always have to go from bottom to top. I can go one, two, three, and I have scored this. Now I take it, I put it, you know, basically, I scored this at the end of the game. I've now got three points, and this stays down here. You, you know, keep your total, you don't tally until the end of the game. And that was it. Now, these guys are exhausted, but the interesting thing you'll notice is, instead on, on this space, instead of there being the arrow that says, hey, once this guy is done, they go up to the board, it's the little recycle sign. What that means is all the dice that were involved with this expedition, they get recycled. So instead of losing these dice, I re-roll them, and here they are, ready to continue working for me. So I don't have to yet spend a turn, waste a turn, collecting dice, because I've still got three dice I can use. Right. So, I've done Explore, and now I have to take a new card, and I'm going to grab this, the Lewis's Woodpecker, which is ironic because it looks like Ordway is going to find Lewis's Woodpecker instead of Lewis. A new one comes out, although it's another bird, Clark's Nutcracker. So, um, you know, Jen isn't going to be completely frozen out of birds if she can grab that before I do. There's a lot of, you know, competition to, be, to grab these because there's so many set collection points. So anyway, I've just done an expedition, reset my dice, and now it's Jen's turn. Now, Jen would like to do an expedition. She's got this queued up, but she needs an A. She doesn't have an A. She's got... So, Jen could this turn declare, I'm going to go hiking, which means she could use this on these question mark spots or what have you, but that's really not that interesting. So I think this turn, Jen is going to recall dice. She can recall all the dice from here, from this side of the board, which means all of the spent negotiation journal dice. Or she can recall from over here, which is all the movement dice, although there's only one die, so she's not going to do that. Or she can recall all of her blue dice from anywhere on the board. And if I had taken these, and you know, I was ready to use them, Jen would probably not recall from here or here. She would instead declare, I'm recalling all my blue dice, and then she would just grab them from me. But, you know, and so that would have been interesting because I did not take a turn to go on ahead and grab all six of these dice. Now, Jen, she is going to, she's going to grab two of my dice. And she rolls them all, and she's got two journals. My guys will help her. Oh, those turncoats. And so she's got three journal dice now two of mine and one of her own, two um, hiking, and a negotiate, and a horse riding. And so that was Jen's turn. You either play dice or you recall dice. And so now it's my turn again. And here's the thing. I mean, I could go on ahead and declare I've got two feet, which would let me get ready to like do this big old river here. But the interesting thing is, now to, to explore this and find the woodpecker, I need a single river and then a single mountain. And, and, I, and I have to start with rivers. And so this is actually going to be kind of a wasteful explore for me, because I could prepare to do this explore, and, but it can do three rivers, but I'll spend all three of these rivers only doing the first one, so that's kind of wasteful. So I don't want to repair this. I probably want to repair this, which means I need some horseback, because then I only am spending two rivers, and I'm not being as wasteful with my prep time. Because, um, you know, because I have to do rivers first. So... But unfortunately, I don't have any um, horse symbols right now. I've got two. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to recall some dice. Jen, she thinks she snagged my guys. I'm going to recall dice. I could either recall this single die, but uh-uh. You know, because remember, I can recall all from here, all from here, or I can recall all the dice that belong to me, or not belong to me, that are loyal to me, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call out all my guys, and so this guy comes back, plus these two that Jen got back. So I roll them all again, and wow, that is a lot of feet. That is a crazy amount of feet. Jeepers creepers. Wow. Okay. Well, that might change my plans for next turn, because I've got one journal and five feet. And so anyway, that was it, and now it's Jen's turn again. And finally, 
You know, if I had not taken mine back, Jen definitely would have used one of my yellow dice to launch this expedition because she knew she could lose it any time. Um, you know, and then she'd save her own die, which I can't snag from her so, to use for something else. But I, I beat her to it. I got all my guys back from her. So Jen's just going to go on ahead and use this to launch this two mountain expedition, which goes one, two, and Jen has discovered the brown bear. And these guys recycle. Because remember, whenever you do an expedition, the dice don't get spent, they get recycled. And so Jen's got another horse. She's got three feet, two horses, and one negotiate. All right. And now Jen, you know, she's got this queued up. She can use it at any time. This is a one-time thing. But now that Jen has explored, she's going to take another one. She'll go on ahead and grab Clark's Nutcracker. And so Jen is definitely, once she has found this, she'll have two. That is a set that'll be worth eight points. And another one comes out, and we can see Big Leaf Maple is in the queue. Who's going to be the first to be able to grab that? So that you know they could potentially turn their set into worth 15 points. Well, the game is going to continue. As you can see, it's a super fluid, fast-playing dice game. Every turn, you spend some dice or you recover dice. And if you'd like to watch a little bit more as we continue to explore, because probably the big thing I haven't shown you, and it's a really big deal, when you do an explore, you could do what Jen and I both done. We just explored a single card, but if you're smart and you set up multiple expeditions before you launch, with one expedition, you can explore multiple cards. Like for instance, for this one, I need to have one river and then one mountain. But say I set up, you know, um, oh, what would it say? Say I set up, yeah, this one, which is two rivers, plus this one, which is three mountains and two rivers. So that means I've got two rivers, three mountains, and two rivers set up. If I launched both of these expeditions at the same time, I would, I would use this two river to get past this. Then I would have three mountains. This would be my first mountain, and this would be my second mountain. I would continue to explore here, and then, remember, I have up to three mountains. I'd only spend two of them, and then I have two rivers. So I'd be able to continue this, and in one explore, I could actually search through two cards and claim two cards at once. And the benefit from that not only is getting multiple cards, but you get to take a bonus turn after it's over. So that's a big, big part of the game is doing advanced planning so you can make big super turns. And if you want to go on ahead and hit the eye up in the top right corner of the screen and watch the extended playthrough, I'll definitely try to demonstrate that. Or alternatively, you can hit the other you know, button and you know under I and go to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.